So there are several different types of scoliosis. The most common one is called idiopathic adolescent scoliosis because it typically occurs um, more commonly in young women than men at the time of adolescence. The scoliosis we define as a, tur a turn in the spine in the coronal plane where the spine bends as opposed to being straight up and down the way it is in this plane when you look at someone from the front. If it's more than 10 degrees, we call it scoliosis. Typically, treatment is not necessary for scoliosis until it reaches about 25 degrees. At that time, we usually recommend treatment in order to minimize the chances of it progressing to the point where it needs surgery. The most common treatments we use, which have shown, been shown to be effective in the vast majority of cases, are vitamin D and calcium supplementation. For a long time, there's been no evidence that physical therapy had any influence over the progression of scoliosis, but there's increasing evidence more recently that a specific type of therapy called Schroff physical therapy, which focuses on spinal balance, can influence and help in terms of stabilizing and sometimes even reversing small curves. So we typically recommend those three things. Once a curve gets to about 25 or 30 degrees, we also recommend bracing. Of all the things that have been shown, bracing is probably the most powerful way to delay or prevent a curve from progressing. It's interesting because until recently, it was difficult to measure that because compliance with the brace is hard to determine. Uh, when you ask somebody how long they've worn a brace, sometimes they'd say, well, maybe six hours, but really they're only wearing it for two to three hours, it's hard to measure it. So an important study came out a couple of years ago where they put thermal sensors inside the braces so we had a better idea of actually how long the braces were being worn. And the bottom line there is that if children wore a brace for less than six hours, it was like not wearing it at all. If they wore it more than 18 hours a day, that was the maximum. It wasn't necessary to wear more than 18 hours a day. But if children wore a brace for 18 hours a day, the chances of them progressing to need scoliosis surgery were only about 10%. So 90% of the time is effective at reducing the progression so the children didn't need surgery. The reason that's important is because once a curve reaches about 45 or 50 degrees, we know from long-term natural history studies that biomechanically gravity takes over, and even if children stop growing, over time, biomechanically, gravity kicks in and that curve will progress over time. So once a curve reaches more than about 45 or 50 degrees, that's usually the surgical threshold where we recommend surgery to, to help straighten the spine and prevent that natural progression from happening over time. So it's important to be seen um, when the curve is smaller because we wanna act in that time period of 15, 20 degrees to do these things to minimize the chances of that curve progressing during adolescence to 45 or 50 degrees where surgery is necessary. Because the ultimate goal for all this is to stabilize the spine and prevent that from happening so we don't need to do that.